What's up everyone and thanks so much for watching. Another great day out here in the woods and we just wanted to go over one of the questions that I've always gotten on this property that we own and that is, as the title says, how do you buy land? And I know that seems kind of generic and I started thinking about it and I thought it's not just how do you buy land but also what are some of the resources available out there to us that for those of us that are looking for property and also some of the things to look out for. So as far as actually buying property goes, it's just like anything else in this world. Where do you go? You go to the internet, right? You go to the interwebs, you start looking. I mean, you can find you a home in no time on the internet. You can find you a car. You can find property too. One site that we used that was very, very helpful to us, and we actually found this piece of property here, is it's, if you look at it on a national scale, it's Lands of America, but also you can go to it by state. So let's say you're going to Colorado, Ohio. It would be Lands of Colorado or Lands of Ohio. Great website. You can go in there and you can search. You can look at it by county. You can look at it by area of your state. Of course, if you're close to a border and you want to look at another bordering state, or if you're going to fly somewhere, you can go look at that. It kind of really helps also to compare just prices in the area because you'll be shocked. Some there'll be some counties that are out there that are you think are pretty rural, but they've got some very expensive land, and there could be some certain reasons as to why it's so expensive versus others, but. You know, as far as how, that's pretty much it. But getting the getting the property itself is no different than buying a home. You got to go through the closing and all that, that fun, exciting process. But it's not that difficult. It's it's really not. And I actually found the process of buying a buying this piece of property easier than closing on a home. Just just in my opinion. So another good point is, what do you look out for? What should you search for? So if you're buying a home, what do you do? You you're going to probably, if you know somebody that knows a lot about homes, you're going to take them with you or you're going to get a home inspector. Sometimes you have to get a home inspector depending on maybe the situation of your loan. I don't know. It's been a while since I bought a home. But those are some resources you can use for that as well to try to find out. But for buying buying property, there's, there's a few things to consider that are a little different. Uh, one of those could be, for example, utilities. So like right now, for example, I'm sitting on our cabin out here, out here in the middle of the woods on top of the cabin. No, I still don't have a railing on this so hopefully I don't just fall off the back but you know I'm sure I'll be fine but you know we have power here so we have utilities at the road now when we bought it we didn't intend to do anything electrical wise we didn't intend to put a cabin out here we sure as heck didn't intend to build a house out here and now that's what we're going to do we're actually my wife and I plan on living out here fortunately for us we already have electrical so it's just a matter of getting the power now you're going to spend some money getting it to your location but the fact that you have that there is kind of it's kind of a game changer if you're going to be building something out there like that so consider that whenever you're looking even if you think that you might never ever do it it does help and it does help with your resale too if you want to turn around and sell it something to think about another one's easement so multiple easements you could have on property and property actually has some easements that you would not see whenever you're buying a house uh, one could be if you're looking at the map of a property, say you're on Lands of America and you're looking at the map and you just see a, a strip going through the property like that and it's clearly a power line. Well, that's an easement. So the power company is going to, they have the rights to access that. I don't know the exact, you know, hate me in the comments if you want, but they have the rights to access that property and they're the ones that keep it up and keep it cut. So you can still, for example, hunt on it. You can plant stuff on it. A lot of people actually use power line easements for hunting. So it could be a benefit to you. It could not be. Personally, we didn't want any of that near our property. Didn't want any of it. Didn't want anybody coming on here. Don't want to have no easements, no nothing. So that was something that kind of, and, and most properties don't have them, but it is something to think about. So if you see that on there, just know you're going to have companies that are going to be able to access it to do stuff like that. Another one is conservation easement. Now, conservation easement, I could see myself having that out here. Conservation easement is, if I can get this right, it's where you're put into an easement with either the county or the state. And because you're never going to, let's say, clear all this behind me, you're allowed to put like a house and maybe a building. I don't know what the rules are, but you can't go in and clear it. So let's say that you wanted to sell this to a developer or you wanted to clear it for farming. Well, the conservation easement, you cannot. Now, I'm sure there's other stipulations and rules in that, and I don't know how you could break it. Usually with a conservation easement, you get two things. Number one, property is much cheaper. Well, not much, but it's cheaper. And number two, your taxes are a heck of a lot cheaper. So if you're in a high tax area, might be an idea, especially if you know for a fact that you're never going to do anything or clear it. Taxes and location. Location, if you're not set on the exact location. So 
wh where we were when we decided on this, we were just kind of looking just at many different areas that were rural. And one of the things that brought us to this piece of property in the county we're in is the taxes are super freaking low, which is perfect. So, for example, this piece of property is 45 acres. Our taxes per year is like $100. Not $100 a month, $100 for the full year versus closer to where we live, we'd be looking at thousands. So, taxes may not matter. If you're already going to spend a, a huge chunk of money on the piece of property, you may not mind paying the taxes, but it is something to consider. And once you start, of course, putting homes and stuff, homes, home or homes, whatever, on your property that will start to take your taxes up and then survey so survey is something i had no idea of when we bought this survey is just that it's a survey of the property with the border as somebody explained to me when i was going through this process a survey is the legal definition of the property to me that is very important it kind of goes hand in hand with the last topic of what to look out for is knowing your neighbors and I don't mean it like a bad thing, like they're bad, but sometimes you'll see on properties where neighbors have been using their bordering neighbor's property for decades and decades. And it's not, it's just an agreement and they just didn't care. Or you come in and buy it and all of a sudden your border's going right through their roads or whatever they're using. It happens. I hear about it all the time. So having that legal definition, especially if you're currently like where we are, we have nobody up on our borders. I have that legal definition now. So if something ever happened, I can kind of go back to that. You would think that it sucks that in this world we have to have that, but unfortunately we do. So even if they say, oh, you don't need a survey, it's probably not a bad idea. And yes, it's expensive. So 45 acres here, it's, it's a, our border is a little over a mile and it's up and down. So you can imagine it takes quite a bit of time. So surveys are pricey, but depending on your situation, it's probably not a bad idea to, to look into it just so you have that kind of that peace of mind. And depending on who you go with to help finance, if you have to finance the property, they may require it. They may require that to make sure it's taken care of. So check into that as well. A lot of properties already have it, which is good. So hopefully people will disclose that just like if somebody sh should disclose whether or not they have a title on a car, for example. And then the last topic, which is my favorite one, which I could just sit here and talk about all, all day and all night, but I'm not, is resources. So resources, resources, resources is the coolest topic, especially when you get out in these rural counties like this so what do i mean by that well we're on woods and we like to do woodsy things and outdoorsy things not just hunt we just like to be out here we like to enjoy nature we like to kind of try to keep it as maintained as best as possible two main resources number one that are taxpayer funded number one dnr contact your local dnr you'd be amazed there are some folks that can come out to just kind of point things out same thing with the uh, forestry service forestry service is the other one and forestry service to me is the key get to know these folks they're you know they're paid by the tax dollars they're usually they're more than happy to come out for one forestry service gentleman here actually told me that if i was looking for other property to call him and he'll meet me there and walk it with me not just with the real estate agent selling it but he will actually walk it and they'll point out things like invasive species that you may have for plants they can help you with animal sign if you're not if you're trying to just learn different things they can point out deer sign turkey sign wherever you're at, right? Whatever type of game animals you may have. They can also help you point out the kind of trees you're looking for. So different types of trees. So for example, we have some pines. You can see some pines behind me. We have patches of pines here. And they were at, point out not only the fact that, duh, they're pine trees, but the size of them to be able to say, hey, you're, you're probably two years out of needing to thin this. So if you're looking to, let's say you're looking to buy your piece of property to, to sell the timber, which we're not here, that is a great resource to go to folks it's these are these are folks that know this stuff so lean on them they're taxpayer funded and mo usually these folks will be more than happy to help out also a third one i'll throw in there is certain foundations or federations or whatever you want to call them for example the national wild turkey federation or foundation i don't know one of those f words we'll leave it at that they were very instrumental in helping us just try to learn what we should and shouldn't do out here we are hunters but no, they don't just help out with turkey hunting, but just groups like that of folks that are so passionate about what they do, they'll send people out. So check these places, email these people. They, they're very helpful. They, they, want, they want to help people to do better with their property, which I think is super cool. So lean on these resources. Oh, another thing before I forget with the forestry services, they will actually do landowner services. Now they will do that here in our county and in the state. It won't be the same everywhere. So if you need roads cut, if you want a fire break built, which is basically a 
a road cut all the way around the border. If you just need area tr uh, trimmed or cut down, and if you want to do prescribed burns, they'll do this stuff, and it's cheap. I'm telling you, you need to check these folks out. There's a lot of good companies out there that'll do it too, but the Forestry Service will come out and do it very, very basic. Now, what's neat is they don't just do things for somebody that just wants to hunt or something like that. One guy told me that was doing some of the dozer work here that he did one over like a couple of weeks ago, and it was like on 80 acres where they just did a giant Jeep trail and ATV trail. Somebody just wanted their own personal ATV trail, which is just, that's just freaking cool. So they'll do stuff. I mean, you just go out there and flag it and map it out, and they'll come out there with the dozer, and they charge you by the hour, but it's a very cheap rate. So look into that too. I mean, especially if you're buying property, and let's say that there's no, there's no entrance, no nothing. You don't even know where to start. They can come out there with the dozer and just get it started for you. So, and they can probably help you out with where the best spot is to start that. But anyway, that, that'll pretty much do it for this video. This is kind of different. It's just me yakking. I hope that's okay. But I hope this is helpful to some people. I, I know whenever we were buying our property, we had a lot of questions. And a lot of those questions didn't really get answered until we had already bought it. So I hope this is helpful to folks. If you like this, please give this video a like and also subscribe. We're going to be doing some more videos like this soon, hopefully in the future. But I thank you so much for everybody watching, and we'll talk to you next time.